Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Ask Brixie, where I answer your questions from the comment section below. If you have any questions that you want featured in the next video, we'll make sure you submit them down below. This is actually the 21st episode. Let's get started. I just got the questions on my phone here. Uh, Marianne Miranda 8251 says, Hey Jordan, what do you think of the declining Lego fans due to the increasing prices by Lego? Yeah, I think the I think that Lego collecting is definitely becoming unaffordable for a lot of people based on the amount of sets that Lego is releasing and also the fact that prices have gone up. However, with that said, I think everybody that collects Lego should always work within a budget and they should only collect certain themes that they thoroughly enjoy. So for example, if you like Speed Champions, then maybe just collect the Speed Champions. Or if you only want to collect Lego Star Wars UCS, then I guess your budget will still fairly or be fairly large. But then just collect Lego Star Wars UCS. Or if you want to only collect Harry Potter, then so be it. So I think Lego makes so many different products offered at different price ranges and from different themes that they sort of accommodate everybody that wants to collect Lego. And you can't collect it all. It's crazy. But if you want to get a brickhead for... $15 or $12.99 or whatever it may be, then you can. Or if you want to get a uh, Lego Star Wars Millennium Falcon for $800, then you can do that. So they make different products offered at different price points. So they sort of appeal to a, a larger demographic. So yes, Lego is getting more expensive and maybe there is a declining amount of Lego fans based on that. But if Lego fans just remember those important things of working within your budget, only collecting the themes that you really like, and just remembering that you can't collect it all, then I think collecting Lego is is still a thing that can be achieved by most. Like, if you just want to collect CMFs, which are only $5 each, then, then you can do that. So I think even though their prices are higher, they've taken some great steps toward offering a diverse product line that can accommodate everybody. I'm probably going to mispronounce this one. Grand Theft Derigable? Derigable? Asks uh, regarding upsizing uh, existing modular buildings. I've always had a soft spot for my first modular, which is the Palace Cinema, but it doesn't seem to get much love in the Lego City. Any chance I could upsize or modify that one? I think it's a great idea. I've seen some people take two palace cinemas and make it like a double corner that would be pretty neat but it, it definitely uh could use an increase in size maybe you could add another floor to it i also think the movie theater inside is sort of lame and it could be larger but i think the only way that you could make it larger is by doubling it like width wise and making it maybe like a, a double corner by putting two of them side by side but actually merging the floors and making a larger more detailed theater within Will I ever do that? I'm not too sure because palace cinemas are quite expensive now because they are retired. Uh, so I don't know if I would ever look to do that, but you could potentially do it by ordering parts. I've never looked into it. I'd imagine that would be fairly expensive as well. It is definitely a modular building that I think could use an upgrade, but I can't say that I'll ever do it and maybe if I do it then I would just add another floor similar to what I did with the brick bank and also the corner garage and the Grand Emporium specifically the brick bank and the Grand Emporium I just ordered the parts specifically to create another floor and I could probably do that for a reasonable price for the uh, palace cinema as well. Brittany Shrub, she asks, have you influenced any of your family members to start building Lego? If you could go anywhere in the world and get your Lego passport stamped, where would you go and why? I have influenced some family members to buy a Lego. Uh, my aunt, my uncle, my mother, my brother-in-law, and my father-in-law. So yeah, I've influenced quite a few people in my family to, uh, to start building Lego. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty funny to think. I've also influenced a lot of you to start building Lego, I think, as well. So I got something to say about my Lego passport. And I'm pretty sad about this. My Lego passport is non-existent. I don't have one. And I'm really disappointed that I didn't think to get one years ago because I've been to so many Lego stores. Like Billund 
Amsterdam, Florida, like Disney Springs, uh, downtown Disney, Edmonton that has two stores here, Calgary, uh, Chicago. I've been to so many different Lego stores and mine would definitely have a lot of stamps in it. So it's unfortunate that I don't have a Lego passport. I should probably get one so that I can fix that. But I feel like I've gone too far now, which is sort of unfortunate. But yeah, I don't have a Lego passport. If I were, if I wanted to get, or where would I want to get it stamped? Billund, where I was. Even at like the Lego house. But unfortunately I didn't. Yeah, so missed opportunity, big time. Goat Brick Guy, what are your thoughts on custom minifigures? They're pretty cool. I like a lot of them, like Citizen Brick build, or has a bunch of them. Whatnot has done some really cool ones as well that are limited to 100 pieces. I think they're really neat, but I still think there's something about them that makes them, like, not, like, catalogable by Lego. So I don't think they're as cool as actual Lego ones that Lego has manufactured. I know they're printed on real Lego, but they're not actual, like, real Lego, like, sanctioned by Lego. So I'm sort of, like, 50-50 in regards to custom printed minifigures. They're cool, but they're not, like, legit. But with that said, Citizen Brick and a bunch of other companies that actually custom print minifigures on real Lego have like some pretty spectacular designs and some, some hilarious ones as well. So they're worth the chuckle sometimes and just worth like the, oh my gosh, look, it's Heisenberg from Breaking Bad in Lego. That's so cool. Like it's just worth it seeing those. So I think they're pretty cool in that regard, but I don't really have any to be honest. Last Rusty Cheesecake Lego fan. That was quite the username. <laughs> what do you think will happen to your Lego when you retire? How long do you plan on keeping the channel running? I uh, really like your channel. Well, thank you. You really like my channel. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Uh, what am I going to do with my Lego when I retire? Well, I'm always going to collect Lego, I would say, until I pass away. Uh, I think, I hope my kids will enjoy the hobby and maybe inherit my Lego. If they don't enjoy my hobby and they don't enjoy Lego, then of course I will liquidate it before I pass away because I know that I will get a better value for it than maybe somebody liquidating it after I pass away, if that makes sense, because I'll know the value of things better. So if my kids don't want it, then I'll liquidate it and they can have the, the dinero or I'll go on a world cruise before I pass away. Bring Jose with me, I guess. She's she'll be lucky enough to come with me. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, of course she would. Uh, she'd come with me. That'd be really cool though to go on a world cruise with the Lego money. Maybe I should just sell it all now and do that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, how long do I plan on uh, operating the channel for until I retire? I guess until I have enough money to retire, like an ordinary person. But will I stop producing Lego videos? And stop collecting Lego after I retire? Probably not. So forever, as long as creating videos and posting them on the internet is still around. So forever. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's the answer to those questions, really. That's it. RPC Extreme 320 asks, where do you see your channel and Lego journey in three to five years? Do you think you will buy more or less sets once you move into the new studio? Seems like you'll have more room for sets, but also more for a city, which will take up more time. It seems like you leave a good amount of sets at the store because your current Lego room is at the brim. Uh, I've already uh, started reducing what I buy. I'm only going to buy things that are like really nice display pieces. Things that are larger and display well. I'm going to get away from the small clutter sets. And I'm going to carry that over as I move into the new studio as well. I'm not going to start collecting every single set. That's madness. I'm only going to collect the ones that display really well as one cohesive set. And ones that I thoroughly enjoy. But yeah, this Lego room is packed to the brim and it has um, caused me to start slowing down and how much I'm actually buying. But when I get a larger studio space, that doesn't mean I'm going to resume buying everything. No, I didn't. I didn't ever buy everything, so the resume is the wrong word, but I'm not going to start buying everything. 
just gonna try and live within my means and like you said there I will be focusing on the Lego city so I'm gonna be more so acquiring all of the sets that are relative to the city and also buying pieces and everything to help customize the city and that's gonna be like the new focus of the channel will be more so on city but also with really cool displays of Lego sets as well so it's just gonna be more of the same but in a studio that's like six times as large yeah it's gonna be epic Johnny has a question here. He says, would you ever consider putting a webcam in the new studio so subscribers or even members as a perk of the channel can watch you build? It's funny that you say this because <clears throat> I was telling Jose that when we get the new studio space, I want to do more live streaming. I want to go back to my roots of, of live streaming more. And then I was telling her like, maybe I could just have like live streams going, like have the webcam in the corner and it's just me working on the city but not narrating the whole thing maybe i put like i dub in some copyright free background music and it's just like playing and it's got like a good shot of the scene that i'm working on in the city and i'm sort of just working on the city but i might disappear for five minutes because i need to go to the washroom or grab some more parts and it's got like a little bit of narration but mostly just like background music and these streams are like going for six eight hours it is an option and it is something that i could do i just don't know if that's going to pollute this channel it might pollute this channel but i also don't think it's worth giving it its own channel because it would be hard to get up 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 in operational and monetized and it would just be difficult to operate then i'd have to like operate a whole nother channel so then it becomes a hornet's nest in that regard but it is something that i want to consider doing but i don't know if it's 100 percent going to be happening yet but i have already given it some thought prior to your uh question there that maybe there should be some more live streaming and maybe it should be long live streams that are just of the studio in general as i work that would be pretty cool Hey from Denmark, I was wondering what is your holy grail Lego set? If money and availability didn't matter, uh, you could get anything, what would you get? I'm pretty lucky, I got a lot of sets. My collection is huge. There's not a whole lot of sets that are on my wanted list anymore. But I'm going to say any Lego Star Wars UCS set that I don't have. The Naboo Starfighter. Uh, the uh, Darth Maul. The TIE Interceptor. The larger Jabba Sail Barge. The original X-Wing. Any LEGO Star Wars UCS set that I don't have, I would like to add to my collection. I think that would be super cool. There are a lot that I am missing. The exact list, I'm not too sure. I'd have to have a look on a computer to actually see the ones that I'm missing. But those would be the ones that I would want to get. All the missing Lego Star Wars UCS sets. Brick Blum says, Do you think you'll ever venture into the world of lighting your Lego City custom or with the kits? Yes, I think I should. I think I should. Custom or with sets? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to custom lighting. So I would have to do it with sets, I think. I don't know. I need a trained pr professional to come help me with that. Because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to that. And that's why I haven't done it. I don't know. <laughs> Custom would probably be the way to go because you'd get everything perfect. And I've seen some incredible lit up Lego rooms out there. They're lit. And I really should do it. I don't know if I'm going to do it right away, but I really should do it in the new place. And it's something that I've contemplated for years and i really should do it so yeah i should do it but i don't know if i'm actually going to do it right away but eventually i probably will alex has an interesting question here he says would you ever consider buying the modular buildings you don't have at the moment uh, for the new and bigger city to fill it up or is it too expensive to do so so i would never buy the sets because they're way too expensive i'm missing market street the green grocer and cafe corner but here's how I would obtain a modular building such as Cafe Corner. So of course I would get it from Bricklink.com and Cafe Corner in new condition, there's 15 listed right now and the lowest price is 2,400 Canadian dollars. There's 34 used ones listed right now for a minimum price of 951 dollars. 
And the used one is located in Hungary. It is complete, but it does not have the box or instructions, which is okay. That's what I would go with anyway. But I would try to get the set a lot cheaper than $951. So what I would do is actually click out the part out link right here under my wanted list. And then once I start that process, I would unselect the three minifigures that the set comes with, name the wanted list, and hit submit for edit. So this is going to give me a list of all of the parts that are in that set, and then I can very easily add all of those parts to a wanted list that I called Cafe Corner. There's going to be some part substitutions on the very bottom of this list, but that's okay. I'm just going to say add to wanted list. So now I have a list that contains all of the parts from the cafe corner set. The next thing that I would have to do is go through my own parts inventory and pick as many parts as I possibly can. And of course, as I do that, I would go through and update my have quantities right here. Once I'm done that, I would just click on the buy all tab. And just for fun, let's click on the auto select function right here and start that. So BrickLink is going to go through a bunch of different stores and try and find all of those pieces at the most reasonable prices. So it looks like BrickLink was able to get it down to $718.80, but it's coming from three different international sellers, unfortunately. So there will be some duty and shipping affiliated with that. But keep in mind, I haven't gone through my parts inventory yet. And if I were to do that, I would reduce this price substantially because I have a huge parts inventory. So I bet you I could cut that in half right off the hop. Like I almost guarantee it. And there's another way that we can reduce this price as well. And that's by making part substitutions. So what you could do is click on the edit button right here. And you're gonna be able to go through and edit all of these. For example, look at this, two half green base plates for 755 and 742. I would just use a regular base plate. In fact, I would mills plate this. So immediately I'd be able to get rid of those. And I'm sure there's some other part substitutions. What you do is you just look for really expensive pieces because some of these pieces, for example, right here, like, holy cow, are you kidding me? That single part is $10.72. That is insane. I don't, I don't know if I could replace this with something else. I'm back on the main wanted list here. And another thing about this support pillar, one by one by six solid pillar, I can click on four, three, triple eight and that's going to bring me to the page where we have all of the colors of this particular piece and click on dark blue and then we can see that some of these are selling for like two dollars four dollars four dollars still fairly expensive i don't know if there's a replacement part for this or not i don't know if this is the original pillar it must be based on the quantity of light bluish gray listed so this must be the current piece also look at this one this arch right here is $18.95. That is insane. Like, that's crazy. Are you serious? $18.95 for one piece? There's got to be something that we could do. I bet you that pairs up with those uh, columns as well. So I could maybe change that to like black or something. Just a quick note on the arch. I went back to the wanted list. So this is arch 3308. So if I click on 3308, this is going to bring up the dark blue arch that's actually in the set. And then I can click on dark blue here and you can see that the cheapest price is $9.33. However, if I go back to arch and I roll down here and I look for one by eight arches, you'll see that there's two different types of arches. There's the arch one by eight by two, and then there's the one by eight by two raised arch. So I could always check out this arch here and click on dark blue. And then I could discover that some of these arches are selling for 95 cents. So I could probably replace it with this arch. So just for fun, I'm going to remove that. And I'm also going to remove this as well. And what is going on here? I just saw something for like $24. Are you kidding me? <laughs> A light bluish gray turntable for $24. Are you insane? <laughs> Are you insane? I'm not going to buy those. In fact, I have different turntables downstairs or I could order different turntable bases from Bricklink here in light bluish gray. This is just an old piece that's no longer manufactured and you don't need that. So I'm gonna get rid of those too and look for any other examples of prices of specific pieces that are just like out to lunch and then reconfirm your selection. And just by making those small edits, I've brought it down to 544.89. So I'd pretty much just go through like all of the carts and do that exact same thing. Like these blue arches here, once again, they are very expensive. Like that is insane. I try and substitute those for something else, or maybe they're like an, I don't think those ones are, but maybe there are some old parts in here that 
are retired parts and replaced by new parts that you could substitute with the new part. And I know there's a lot of examples of that in this set. So you could go through and try and fix this stuff. Like this door is crazy, insane, expensive. $27.50 for that door. Like get rid of that. Are you serious? So yeah, just go through and make like a ton of edits to this before submitting your order. And then like you could get this price like way down. And there's tons of examples of, of what you could do and what you could replace things with. And like, look at that 3775, that, that is crazy. <laughs> there's no way, there's gotta be a good part substitution for that. <laughs> That's wild, I'm not gonna buy that for $37, you gotta be crazy. Yeah, so just go through and I would cut that price in more than half. Like, I bet you I could put a cafe corner together if I were to pick the parts for like a couple hundred bucks. If I were to pick all my pieces and then make parts substitutions like that, it'd be like a couple hundred bucks at most. So that's what I would do to keep costs down. I don't need the original sets and the instructions and the minifigures and all that. And I don't even need all the original parts. I just need to build something that would represent it in my city for a fraction of the price. Epic Lopez has a, a lot of text here, but he's essentially asking if I'm gonna put a Ninjago diorama in the uh, new studio. Yes, I am. I'm gonna be taking, like you say in your question there, I'm gonna be taking the Ninjago City, Ninjago City Docks, Ninjago City Markets, and Ninjago City Gardens, putting those in the city. I also have two temples. I've got the Dragonstone Shrine as well. And there's gonna be one massive forested area and that's probably gonna go somewhere on the outskirts of the forested area. And that forested area is gonna have the campground, it's gonna have uh, the medieval stuff, it's gonna be like an entire fantasy area, and the Ninjago stuff is gonna be integrated somewhere in that realm. I'm gonna have my serious city stuff, train yard, uh, downtown core, amusement park, observatory, all the serious stuff in one section and then all of like the fantasy stuff in one section and Ninjago would be included in that. What do you want Ben and Millie to get into Lego when they get older and if so what? Yes, I would because it's a great learning toy. Uh, it's great for learning and, and education. So for that reason, as they grow up, I want them to get into Lego. Also, if they wanna work with me one day and carry on my legacy, that'd be cool. I'll never force them into doing that because Unfortunately, I've turned my hobby, Lego, into business. So if they don't want to take over the family business, then that's their choice. If they want to go become a, a lawyer or a construction worker or a nurse or a doctor or a farmer or whatever they want to be, they can, they can go do that. But if they want to get into Lego to take over this business that I've worked so hard to create, then they are more than welcome to do that. Um, but as they grow up, I would love for them to get into Lego just because of its educational... Um, influence, I guess. Yeah, so I, for sure, they should get into it 100%. It's great. They're even putting Mega Blocks together right now, the big starter pack of Mega Blocks, and I'm sure they'll graduate into Duplo eventually and then into some of the 4-plus sets, etc. Sports Prods YT asks, how often do you dust your LEGO sets and LEGO City? <clears throat> well, I uh, dust it when I move it. Every time I move the city around, I grab my little vacuum and I dust it. If I build a medieval area and I see some dust, I dust it. If I'm moving sets from shelf A to shelf B and I see some dust, I dust it. And I move around my stuff quite often. So I don't actually set time aside to dust Lego, but when I'm moving things around, they get cleaned just because I can't see dust and not clean it. So I just do it like proactively as I'm working in the Lego room. As I see it, I take care of it. Oh, and what do you know? That was actually the last question. So there we go, everybody. That wraps up Ask Brixie episode 21. Once again, if you want your questions featured in the next episode, make sure you throw them down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for coming on by. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. Farewell.